stuff. Hmm, what's this curious device? Let's have a look. <gasps> Hold the phone. It's a ZX Spectrum laptop from Retro Radionics. But it's not just a ZX Spectrum laptop. Oh no, it's a ZX Spectrum Omni laptop, which means it can be many different machines. Let's take a look at what this offers. With regards to build quality, it's really well made. Um, this actually just feels like a Spectrum. Um, it's got two very, very strong hinges and um, all of the extra bits and bobs are very well furnished in the case. So from the left to the right, we've got two SD slots here. Uh, the top one is a full size SD card. The bottom one is a trans flash or micro SD. I've not managed to get the micro SD slot working yet, but I'm probably doing something wrong because it can be a bit picky with cards. I've got several that do work and a few that don't work. Over here, we've got the dip switches, which tells the machine what to do. And there is information in the ZX Omni Facebook group on what these do. I'm going to show you a couple of the machine ROMs. Um, I'm going to stick to the ZX Spectrum ones, though, because I'm not really um, an expert on things like ZX81 or the Ace. So um, I'm going to steer clear of those to uh, save my ignorance. This is the NMI button. You press this and it will literally load the NMI menu so that you can get yourself into loading games from the SD card slot. And here are two joystick ports. The front one is Kempston and the rear one is um, Sinclair. Now don't be confused, it's not Sinclair joysticks as you had with the later Sinclair Amstrad machines. It's the ones that give the numbers as opposed to the ones that give the Kempston. Any Kempston joystick will work in either of these ports. So for two player, you can select player one for Kempston and player two for Sinclair or vice versa. As we've come to expect from Retro Radionics, the faceplate, the key mat, um, and the case are actually really good. I mean, they're, they're pretty much perfect. I won't say they're indistinguishable from the originals, but they're, they're there. Um, colors are great. The new shot blasted mold is really good for the case. Um, on the left hand side, you've got a reset button, which is all good. Um, and moving around to the back of the machine, we have from left to right, uh, power input and power button. We have an edge connector, which I don't believe is compatible with um, Spectrum um, um, add-ons. We've got ear and mic, and we've got an HDMI um, output, which currently isn't working, but will come in a later revision as an option or something. Don't truly understand that, but yeah, I'm afraid. So uh, please forgive my lack of knowledge on that. Uh, we've got a plug, which goes in and out. It's a DIN connector. It's the same DIN connector as on the Omni that you will use for um, plugging into SCART, but here it powers the screen. The buttons on the side of the screen actually all have functions. Now this is power on and off, but you don't really need to use this. And I pressed this by mistake and it got really confused as why the screen wasn't coming on. Um, so running from the top, I'll just run through what they are so you don't have to work them out like I did. These two here, the top and the third one down, are volume up and volume down if you press them on their own in isolation. However, if you press this one, it kind of goes into a sub menu, which goes through things like color and contrast, uh, brightness and screen ratio. So you press that to say uh, screen ratio and then hit that one or that one and it'll switch from 16.9 to 4.3 ratio for original ratio goodness. Um, underneath there, we've got the source button, which will take you between AV1 and AV2. So it's pretty much redundant actually that button and um yeah that's all right so let's power this up at the moment on the dip switch set dip switch settings uh we've got it set to toast rack which is these last three five six seven eight all up which means they're one 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 so one 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 and the uh, rom settings are set of those three dip switches Apologies for me not being able to talk very well today. I've got, I'm just getting over a cold, as usual. Um, so let's power this up. Here we go. Now we can see that it's finding the ESX DOS uh, volume. Now we're in 4.3 mode, which is all good for you purists. And we are going to press the NMI button on the right hand side. 
this gives us a lovely little menu and let's go down to games because that's all we're interested in really and we can go down to let's see slap fight that's a good one slap fight is excellent so um space start game now i need a joystick so let's see if i've got a joystick somewhere joystick where are you where have you gone joystick i put one out earlier didn't i i found it it was lurking lurking like a lurker so let's plug this into the Kempston port, which is the one towards the front. Oh, sorry, I twatted the camera there. The one towards the front. So I'll plug that in there. Lovely, nice snug fit. And this is my Koenig speaking. Ta-da! Good joystick, this. Loads of people hate them. I love it. So we're going to choose Kempston, so press 1. And we're going to go one player, which is 4. I'm terrible at this game, but... Uh, Oh, great. <laughs> now, I don't know if you can hear the sound. It's quite quiet. Apparently there is a beeper mod, so let's just turn the volume right the way up. So it's still quite quiet, but... This is beeper sound. Um, anyway, that works. No one wants to watch me play games badly. That's um, Baz Harding and Dave Birdsell's thing. So, uh, yes, so that works great. But let's also see what happens when we plug the joystick into the other port and go for two Sinclair. You know, just to prove it works. And we'll go one player. What am I doing? Two. And then we go one player by pressing five. No, four. Can't even count. And there we go. Sinclair joystick works great. All plugged in at the same time. Great stuff. This is actually a really good game. But you can't play it through a camera because there's a slight delay. So let's get that. It's almost impossible to see the bullets, which makes it even more awesome. Oh, you bugger. Right, so. Slap fight. Now if you press the NMI menu. We could go and pick something that's 128K so that we can see what 128K music sounds like. Um, oh, I feel the same, Monty. This has got my favourite piece of um, music on it. wonderful stuff now the little speakers built into the screen are tiny and tiny speakers because the law of physics you know, dictates it's going to be a bit tinny so why don't we get my little near field compact speaker down oh, pop it over there twatting the the prototype that I've been lent and let's see if we can find ourselves a cable that we can plug in. So put that into the back. Now that's silenced. There's a next laptop, but now we're going to plug it, turn this speaker on. So I'm going to go and get the uh, power supply that was supplied. Put that into the back. Plug in the US plug, which has got a UK adapter. And this is an um, international Shishmonti. This is an international um, rated power supply, so it's uh, 9 volts, 2 amps, but it's uh, centre positive. So we'll plug that in so we can get a little bit of power. Yeah, that's much better. 
and just to go back now to the speakers in the screen. So that's why I plugged it in, so you can see a representation of what the actual sound is like. Just straighten the camera up again. Right, so we're in a Sinclair one. Um, but what we actually want, I think that's interface two in the olden days. Zero start from game. Yeah. Oops. Oh, I'm dead. Anyway, you don't want to watch me playing games. Let's see if we can get a close up of the screen. Now, we're probably going to get some artifacts on the, the camera, um, as you can see by me shifting it around. And that's due to the Moiré pattern between the dot pitch on the LCD panel and the dot pitch on the sensor. When they don't match up, you get what I like to call weatherman's ties, and it's probably going to be more apparent in the white banding along the top there. But um, yes, so uh, you will see some artifacts that aren't necessarily happening in real life. Let's load something else up, because I just want to show you what happens when we switch between the modes. So let's try Rainbow Islands. Now, if you remember, and you can just about see my finger, I'll shift this over. I said that this is the volume up and the volume down. But however, if you press this button here, it puts you into menus like brightness, contrast, color, language, and zoom. So we're going to stick that into 16.9. Now, I know loads of people are going, no, what the hell are you doing? But some other people will be going, if you've got the screen, you might as well use it. And obviously, because of the shape of the spectrum itself, you're going to have to have this shape of a screen uh, to cover it and for it to be in a laptop format. So um, let's see how that looks. Please don't hate me. <laughs> I hope this is in focus. Pretty sure it is. Right. OK. Rainbow Islands, the story of Bibble Bubble. So, I can't even remember how you start this game. Okay. Oh, that's it. You put the credits in with the thing and then you press space. Didn't ask me for a joystick option, did it? Good old Rainbow Islands, one of the best games on the spectrum, if you ask me. Oh! And then, just so you can see that back in normal mode, let's go back into. And everybody's feeling much more comfortable now, no doubt. I'm having to look around the bloody camera. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. We're out in the field picking hen pa. Okay, so um, yeah, I think we'll end that bit there and have a quick look at some of the ROMs. Right, so just going to take the joystick out and going to have a quick look at some of the ROMs. Now, I'm going to throw up on the screen um, some information about what ROM banks there are. There's eight ROM banks. There's uh, a test ROM, an ACE ROM, ZX81+, plus, SE Basic, nine tiles, 128K, plus 2E, uh, the normal specy ROM, and the toast rack. Now, we've just been looking at the toast rack, which is all good. Um, but I just want to show you how easy it is to switch between ROMs. So... Okay, so these last three dip switches here uh, correlate to the ROMs that you're using. Now, at the moment, we've got 6, 7, and 8 are up, 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 which is 1, 1, 1, and equates to the 8th bank, or well, bank number 7, because it starts numbering at 0, which is the Toast Rack ROM. But if we go, for example, um, 1, 0, 1, so 1, then knock that down for a 0, 
camera and then turn it on what we get is Amstrad copyright because it's an Amstrad spectrum so let's turn that off um, there's no point going into it because it's going to be exactly the same as you would imagine so an interesting ROM here is the Nine Tiles ROM, which is, let's see what that's listed as, that's one, zero, zero. So we'll go one, which is up, six, zero, and then zero. And then we will be able to and powering on, you can see the Nine Tiles Network's 1981 copyright information comes up, which is the precursor to the 1982 Sinclair Research Limited. And interestingly, they kept the um, copyright for this until Amstrad took over. I don't know a lot about this, but I know if you press, for example, the J key, you don't get load. So it looks like it doesn't have uh, tokenized basic or anything like that. And it's got a very strange little cursor going on there. Um, Don Superfo worked on this with George and it's really really rather nice and rather nice indeed. I'm really rather pleased um, that they've chosen to let me have a look. This isn't mine. I don't get to keep it like all the stuff um, but um, yeah thank you. I'm really really grateful for you giving me this opportunity to have a look at this. Um, Try to be as honest as possible. Uh, this is the prototype and there are a few little teething problems um, but that being said, it's a very good and portable machine. Portable Spectrum, something you should carry around. Who'd have thunk it? Check it out. Anyway, I'm uh, not sure there's a lot more I can say about this, but um, yeah, well done. Very, very well done indeed. And I believe these will be available um, from Pete Smith, ZX Renew, the guy to go for for things like membranes and all that sort of stuff. Um, just show you quickly around the bottom of the unit actually because I forgot to show you its saucy little bottom and we can see it's got two really well manufactured brackets um, which go up to the hinges so yeah it's it's properly done really properly done okay then um, this is Mark from Mark Fixes Stuff signing out and reminding you to subscribe to get your fix um, got quite a lot of stuff on the pile of shame at the moment, so I uh, might actually make a few more little videos in 4K. See you on the other side. Bye!